Is that right? Yeah. He was You we, know what's crazy? I've never met him. What? I've never met Ice Cube. You like, serious? Hand to hand, like, nah. Uh, it's yeah, because wait. the first time I had a chance to meet him, him and Send Dog were beefing. My what? brother. Yeah, this is right after he did Cypress Hill. Uh, okay, yeah, I remember right. that. I remember yeah, because that. You know, Cypress came out with a record and he came back on him. But we're backstage at the Smoke and Grooves tour, and my brother was ready for him. I'm going to see this nigga tonight. Because Sen didn't even diss him. Sen wasn't even on the record. Yeah. Okay? And um, so when he saw Cube come out of his locker, man, <laughs> holy shit. I haven't seen my brother like that since then. I mean, he was on Cube like, what's up, motherfucker? Yeah, nigga. I ain't say shit about you, motherfucker. What's happening, though? Right here, nigga, right now. You know, and my, my brother's spitting yeah. in his face, and his wife and his ch child is right there. Sam was on him. And Cube was like, no, man, no, man. I don't, you know, that's not even what it's about. It's not even. And it kind of, you know, diffused it and yeah, kind of yeah. walked off. Yeah. Let and me, then I never had a chance to meet him. So there's O'Shea, and yeah. then there's Cube, right? The, who's, who's the, the O'Shea guy? I know. With the O'Shea, we were classmates. We played B football together. My brother used to drive him home after games because we went to Taft. So, you know, <clears throat> when the bus leaves, yeah. you want to hang out a little bit. You know, if you if the bus leaves, you we RTD back two hours to get to L.A. Or my brother used to come out to the games and drive us home. Okay. The O'Shea that used to, like, you know, I'm like, hey, what would you think of this rhyme? Oh, that's dope. Like, hey, you should, do you think about this? this that's the O'Shea. Yeah. The O'Shea, like I was telling you, like, um, I got our assistant principal to open our auditorium up during lunchtime. And he was like, hey, I'm doing a show at Skateland. Yeah. When Stereo Crew became CIA, he was like, your crew should come. I was like, let's do it. But let's let's practice here because it's all the time we got. Yeah. So they would open up the auditorium and we would we would rehearse. And I remember he would be like him, KD, me, Jammin' James, you know, uh, my boy Wallace. And Jammin' CG. James, he then went on to produce Light of Shade of Brown, Yeah, right? Jammin' James was one of my DJs. I had two DJs. I had DJ Romeo, who, who I remember went. Romeo, too. Yeah, DJ Romeo. Before we it had, was with Master Rhyme? Yep. Two DJs, two MCs. Yeah. Jammin' James and uh, DJ Romeo, me, MCG. We we had like a MCG, we called the car, KTK Cartoon Crew, whatever. We were kids. Yeah. But um, I remember he was like, nah, you need to go solo, man, because... Cause I used to rhyme about like stuff about like, you know, I used to write poetry. I used to rhyme about what it was like, you know, growing up, you know, when black people look at you and they're not really feeling you and Latinos don't know what you are and white people, you Been know, I used, I, used to, I used to do that kind of stuff. Right. And yeah. then sometimes I align in Spanish or whatever. And he goes, man, you need to, you need to go solo, man. Cause this cartoon, I mean, it's cool, but it ain't, you know, and we performed at Skateland together yeah. and he was a cool dude. Blood hood. Yeah. Yeah, they chicken wire. We yeah, were behind chicken absolutely. wire. Absolutely. Uh we got there, we we're in the back of a Nissan truck, they start shooting. <laughs> I'm like looking, he goes, put your, get down, fool. And he hits the window, the car drives off. We come back thirty minutes later, the sheriff's leaving, everything's cool. We go in, we're behind chicken wire. I ain't never performed like that before. Yeah. You know, doing our thing. But that O'Shea, really cool. We'll call, hey man, how you doing? You good? Yeah, man, you know. And then, you know, I went away. Um and he, uh, w right when I left, and I told you, I took his tape, the demo tape for CIA. I dated this girl, Wendy Kennedy. Her sister, Tracy, dated Andre, Dr. Dre. Yeah. And they were performing at Knott's Berry Farm. And he was like, yo, you got to get my tape. You got to get my tape to, 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 uh, to you know, Dre. 
Um, and I was like, all right, like, I'll see what I could do. And I get, you know, I told Tracy and she introduced me to Andre, gave him the tape. He was like, this is you. I said, nah, I go to school. My, my boy, he's there in, they in uh, CIA, this group. And he goes, all right, all right, I'll check it out. I don't know if he did. Yeah. I never heard back, but that was, you know, and we were cool. And then this NWA came and all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I'm from Compton. I was like, wait, when we drove you home, your house was kind of by the airport. Like it was, yeah. you know, it was like, you. when would you, I was like, right. I was like, right. oh, I get it. It's a persona. Yeah, so that's it's what I'm act. saying. Like it's a, it's a Broadway it's a, play. It's a, it's a yeah, and and it, and 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 but hardworking dude. No, hardworking I mean, dude, cool dude. I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I I've always often said, and I've never said it in public. I think more in just conversation with my son and yeah. people that I in my inner circle. Like, you know, the gangbang world knows each other, right? And I think. Nobody has ever asked, what hood is N.W.A. from? What are they rolling 60? Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> are they kitchen crib? Are they, you know what I mean? Nobody's ever asked. Yeah. But and then people take this gang thing and, and forget to because of the fame, they don't yeah. ask or yeah. what. I don't know. It's funny like that. But guys, welcome. This is the Havana Lounge podcast. I'm wrapping down with my brother, Marco Martinez. Make some noise hey, hey. in the motherfucking house. Get the man to clap a song. <laughs> yes, indeed, my mama. Hey, man. hey hey uh, it's a pleasure to have you, brother. I, I don't know how much of that they heard, man, but we're just going case by case out here. Case by case. And yeah. um, a lot of people don't know, bro. Um, you're you're Cuban. I am Cuban, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. The Cubans you know, are being well represented tonight. Yeah, we are. I'm. I'm. You know, trying to follow in your footsteps, man. Get down. <laughs> Uh, uh, stop that messing around <laughs> when Cuba is in your town. Yeah. True indeed, man. Um, it, it's a blessing to have you, brother. I, I recently got up on um on Snowfall. Yeah. Because we're gonna take it there. Yeah, yeah. But before we go there, tell tell me um and my people, man, how 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 your upbringing was, where'd you grow up? Okay. How did this whole acting bug come about for you? Okay. And 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 that kind of thing. All right. So my parents are both Cuban, and but I was born in the Bronx, and um, I used to do, you know, you know, little kids, you know, like tambores, you play tambores, so little little parties, festivals. I used to sing at them, you know, and, yeah. and you know, I was four, three, four, and dance, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. And there was a guy, uh, Rene Cadenas. He was a producer of a show called Via Alegre. It was a PBS bilingual kids show that filmed out here. Okay. And he saw me and um, he, he, you know, talked to my parents, talked to my mom. And the next thing you know, we're on a, this how old, we're on a Pan Am. And Airlines, we, we yeah. Flying, oh, was it TWA? No, it was Pan Am, Pan Am. We, we flew out. Both of them gone. Yeah, I know. Both yeah. of them gone. But we flew out and, you know, next thing you know, my family's moving to L.A. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, uh, I was on that show for, you know, a couple of years. It wasn't too long. But you know, I was I was playing me, and I, difference. I'd, I'd come on at various times, do different sketches, and and you know, I was the bilingual um, Cuban kid, which was cool. They never really talked about my race. You know, it'd be a, a Cubano, so we never got into that. But I would always be the little kid that could speak, you know, Spanish. So growing up, and then you know, coming to L.A. Uh, from New York, where everybody spoke Spanish, right? You what know, what? How old were you when you came to L.A.? About four. Oh, yeah, same I, age I was, I was a kid, when yeah. I came from Cuba. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a kid, four, but but it was a culture shock because yeah. you came here and black was black, well, white was white, and if you spoke <laughs> yeah, Spanish, you were Mexican. That was it. It was nothing in the middle. In the middle. Nobody Except knew. Except us. That was it. Nobody <laughs> knew. Like, they were like, I, you know, I'm not yeah. sure. Except, Are they some niggas? Or yeah, they, cute, they don't little, know. Latino? What the? What's wrong with these motherfuckers? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, it took, my brother's nine years older than me, right? So you figured the the to him to adapt in L.A. took longer. Sure. Yeah, he used to get in fights all day. He went to three or four different high schools from getting, you know, fighting. Uh, people used to say, hey, you know, he's fake nigga. Hey, wait, what you Mexican? Y'all yeah. ain't really. And, not and, black enough to be with the blacks, not Latino enough to right, be with the Latinos. Right. And you know, then to make it worse, they put me in an ESL class. 
Yeah. So there was me, some Asian kids, Same here, an man. African kid, <laughs> uh, and, and some Latino, you know, Mexican kids, right? Yeah. And then the black kids used to walk by the class and be like, Remember this? Oh, oh look, look, African booty snatcher. Oh, you don't see? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Reading Janet yeah. and Mark books. Yeah. The dog is black. Black, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no, Marco, is you, not Jew. I said, Jew. Yeah. No, yeah. no, it's you. So I got, you know, my accent. and um, that, that was cause for a fight back then. It was. It Real was. Talk. It was a lot of fights, man. It, my, it was crazy times because we, we move. When we came out here, we lived off third in Vermont. So I went to um, Commonwealth Elementary. My brother went to Virgil, you know. Here's what's crazy, back when kids can walk to school by themselves. Yeah. 18th Street used to walk me and my friends to school. And they would always tell us, hey, don't get into gangs, okay? Hey, loco, don't get into gangs, man. Leave that gang stuff alone. Get into books, man. And I was like, but you're in the gang. Yeah, I'm in it because I have to, but you don't have to, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, that's dope. And it, you don't hear about those stories, right? But, but that's how I grew up, you know? And then um, mostly everybody in the neighborhood, in that neighborhood, you know, you were, you were a lot of Latinos, Filipinos. When we saw black Latinos, it was because my mom's friends and we, we'd all get together, right? But, but culture shock, man, right. coming out, you know, and, and, just, yeah, it was crazy out here in L.A. People were not having it. Mm -hmm. Martinez. The hell is that? What y'all yeah. in, man? Y'all, y'all. You know who helped us a lot, though? Who's that? I ain't gonna lie. You? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Aside from Roberto Clemente and True. Celia Cruz. True. Sammy Sosa, the baseball player, for real. Because even up until that point, a lot of people didn't really know that, this, that we were a, a, a race of yeah. people. Yeah. That are lost in both cultures. Right. And forgotten sometimes until we come out and open our mouths, you know, and let them know like, yo, I'm African, but I'm also Latino. My slavery was a little bit different than yours. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. basically what it boils down to. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Chattel slavery is different, you know, that we had. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's worse. It was different. No, we niggas uh, with Latin last name because of the European Spaniards. The Spaniards. And Portuguese. brothers are... are are the same difference only with a white white last name. Here's here's what I, here's what I European. Found. You tell me if you find the same thing. I get with a lot of people, mostly black people. They, I used to have trouble because they'd be like, "What are you?" I said, "Cuban." You black? Yeah, but I'm Cuban. Like in Cuba, people see you. They see that you're black, so you don't have to say I'm black. You say, "Hey, you're Cubano." If you go to Dominican Republic, uh, Dominicano, they I already see you're black, right? And I'm like, that's a culture. We're, we're, we, we tied our culture, right? So we go, nah, I'm Cuban. I, I'm Boricua, right? We know that you're black. Unless we're telling a story, we say, hey, Cubano, Moreno, Cubano, ese, right? Yeah. The, the black Cuban. But a lot of black people, especially growing up, would be like, you just black. Like, if you're going to kick it, you black. You're not, you know. Yeah. You you trying to be different? No, well, I ain't trying to be different. It's hard to explain, man, when you're one of us. But it's it's like I just say I'm both. Yeah, I'm both. You know what I mean? My mother is very light skin, fair skin, same here. And her her background is Spaniard through that lineage. Same and my here. dad is very dark, dark like this this equipment. And his is more of an African chango. Yep. You know, yep. tribe yep. thing. Yep. And then these people were forced to meet and interlink in all these other things, right? We didn't have, have a choice. We were born. We didn't know right. what these motherfuckers was, right. right? What our peoples was. We don't know. Right. It's not our choice. We, we didn't pick to be this. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm so proud to be this nowadays. Yeah. And, and the beauty of gotcha. being so versatile yep. and flexible yep. that can, we can fit in like chameleons anywhere yeah. with just about anybody. Yeah. And, and, and guess what? Sasa's hot. We've been doing that since we were been kids. Doing that. People call me, hey, man, it's a salsa club. Man. Dude, I've been doing that since I was a kid. When yeah. You guys weren't even trying to listen well, to it, right? Y'all trying to beat me up. Y'all trying to beat me up. <laughs> no, listen, it's the same thing. Listen, my mom got out of Cuba. And my mom's mom was uh, uh, Jewish. Uh, half, you know, Jewish uh, Kuana. The family came down there many, many, you many got years the Jubans ago. Down in right? And her, her dad was a tall 6'5 Taino, half Taino, half African 
nose. Did he look like you know the the Got crying him. Native American dude? <laughs> right. that, that's who. That's what he looked like with, with yeah. when I I was like, damn, the dude is like six five. Yeah. And look no like doubt. that, and and the way my mom got out of Cuba is when the synagogue was was leaving Havana, my my grandma said, "Hey, hey, take my daughter," mm. you know, and 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 that's how my mom got out. But Damn. but my mom, you know, she's we call they they call them mestiza, right? Because right. mulatto was black and white, Fact. mestizo was something else. Yes. My mom be like, "Nah, nah, he's so negra," you know. Yeah, I'm my mom white. too. You can't yeah, tell nah, her she. You can't. She European. She, <laughs> yo soy una negra. Negra. And she, clear. she like she like. Mom's just like. Mom's just like that backdrop. You know what I yeah. mean? The palm tree there. Yeah. Mom's just like that, but she takes in a minute. I'm nigga straight up. That's it, and you know? and and that's you know. But I, I I appreciate it. Like I was telling you earlier, um, even in L.A., what would tend to happen is is a lot of the the Cubans. You know, especially you know, we, we we would get together. You know, and I'm yeah. say for your audience, one of the the first Cuban festivals in L.A. You know, my my parents threw. You know, up in Griffith Park, a lot of people used to go, and those are the big fiesta cubano. You know, Absolutely. And, and people used to come out. But that was a time, really, it was like networking. We would see each other. Hey, I just opened a restaurant. Hey, I opened a little shop. Hey, you know, something, and people would talk and connect. And that's where I felt the most comfortable, you know, because because nobody was asking me what I was. It was yeah. just like we we grew up more on the religious side of shit. Yep, it was more the Christian church and all that. So in this particular church, it was all Cubans. Okay, and um, that's kind of how we got that same feel. Like like fuck, I feel like I'm at home here. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, and then as you grow up and people separate and go different places, you know, and then touring the world has helped me to see a broader picture yeah. of every fucking body. Yeah. And, you know, things change. Anyway, you get knowledge of self. Yeah. You get, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You bring it back around 360, you wrap it up. You know what I mean? And sen so, so then you get more of a sense of that down home cooking. You get the, the empanadas, you yeah. get the palomilla, yeah, you get, yeah, the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> con un bistec empanizado, you know what I mean? yeah. La ropa vieja. You got them con mojo, yeah, you gotta get Absolutely. that, yeah, yeah. Now, hey. <laughs> I'm gonna have some of that later today. Listen, what you just said is important, though, um, because I lived overseas for two years. Um, I had a weird experience. I, I I was going to go to UCLA, and I took my buddy off La Brea to take a test for the Army. I was waiting for him. The guy was like, you might as well take it. I'm like, man, going in the army. I was waiting and waiting. I finally said, what the heck? I took it, scored well. And I ended up, my, my buddy convinced me, sign up for two years. We can go to Europe. I was like, put it in writing. They put it in writing. I was like, man, I'll never, when will I get to go to Europe? Right? And, and I got to go, I was in a military intelligence unit. I got to go to uh, live in Germany and, and pretty much Europe. But here's the thing, you know, I, it was different for me is it was like a regular job. And when I was done, I was in a theater group. And when I was done there, I, I went to London for six months and studied theater. And like I had a regular job in the morning and then I'd go yeah. study theater. But the important part was. What, what years were these in relation to woo, everything? I went in 88, get out 90. Okay. Uh, I was there when the wall fell down. I got a piece of the 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 East German. Now, would you say you got into the services because you didn't have a plan? Yeah, I you think, know how we come out of high school and we still a little yeah, fucked up. Yeah, like, what the fuck I'm gonna do now? Not, nah, you know what? Um, my buddy Gary was going. My buddy Britton was in. Right, I was like, you know, I was in a, I was in a, I delayed entry because I was in a dance crew. <laughs> In LA, break dancing? Nah, we were we were we were doing like the training, like Uncle Jam's Army, and, yeah, you know, all okay. that. And then, uh, um, and then, uh, you know, we were we were kind of doing an Egyptian Lover with the records, and we would kind of dance. In LA, it was huge. That was it was like a big dance groups, and and, and my group, you know, um, uh, Ultra Wave, uh, you know, and and my group ended up being the dance champs, right? So I, okay. we were and. I had an, an army day and I was like, nah, I can't go because we Christmas, we got a big, like, it's a showdown, you know, and I got to win this. And so right, we, right. we won. And then when I was done in February, I was gone. But um, I, you know, I think it was more like I didn't think I was mature enough 
You know, like I thought, like for the armed services. No, for for I thought I was gonna go to school, and I thought like right, I'm gonna go to college. It's gonna be in the same city. I'm a mess up, like, cause I'm still like people are still doing, you know, trying to pull me to dance, and we were going on Soul Train, and my boy Lou, shout out to Cuddy Mac, Louie. yeah. But I was like, then I'm gonna do that <laughs> kind of, yeah, Lou, yeah. I'm gonna do that kind of stuff, and and I'm not, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew yeah. I wanted to be an artist, yeah. But I was still living for my parents, right? Because at that time right. it was like acting. That shit got talking me about acting. Out the crib. Yeah, they got right. Me kicked out the crib one time. I, cause, cause I rapped. I had a little record we yeah, talked about, right. and I went from rapping, and then I, my goal was to make a record. I made a record. Boom, I'm done. Then dancing. I want to win dance champion. What was the name of the record? Uh, Getting sweated by Cartoon Crew. Jam and James, me. Cartoon uh, Crew. Yeah, KTK. Check, is, it on, is it on YouTube? Can oh it find it on man, YouTube? I don't know. I think. Um, Wallace has a copy. Yeah, you probably find it on, on YouTube. Yeah, don't just sweep right over. Yo, That's a big man, deal, no, man. That was a long time. <laughs> what time? What year was that? You might have beat me to the pot. Ooh, 80. John O. Walker. We're on Jumping Jack Records. So that was about 87, 86, yeah. 87. Yeah. Uh, that we did it. In, in, now, did you rap in Spanish on this record? Nah, they ain't let me. They didn't let me. Nah, See, that was, that was they the ain't struggle, people. That shit was real back then. They didn't let me. They, they, until you... Real. Because I was like, I used to battle rap. I used to have a little, yeah, I'm the number one in English and Spanish. When I start talking, call me señor because I'm only six. That's the Spanish definition of rock to his place. So that was a little thing I used to do, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, and then yeah. when I used to bust it on people, they'd be, no, nah, man, I don't even know what you said. Like, hold yeah. on, time out. Like we was cheating. Right, but by that time, everybody was like, oh, and then I could right. hurry up and get away. But, but now, nah, like, I think, you know, we got on this little label, you know, and, and my goal was to make a record, right? And we made a record, and we did some performances. Like I said, Skateland, I performed with O'Shea, with Ice Cube. Um, the did cartoon some stuff. Yeah, performed in, in, you know, back when he was in CIA yeah. before NWA, and did some performances. And then, you know, it was like, all right, I'm, I moved on to dancing. I, I went to a party at Fairfax High. Didn't know anything. I was like, dancing, what's that? And I remember my, my, there were my friends on this group, Romeo's came out. First of all, I've never seen... In L.A., such beautiful black women. Like, yo, I was like, what is this? Because, you know, where I grew up, there wasn't, I was like, I've never seen this before. Like, everywhere you look, you know, the, girl, the, the good girls, they were, they were dancing, yeah. and all them, them. And I, like, I got, oh, my God. Like, I wanted to marry all of them. Like, I would. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I think I could do this. And my boys were dance champs. And they were yelling, screaming for these guys. Like, I'm serious. Like, they were the Beatles. And I would start hanging out with Malik, rest in peace. And, and we'd go to Fox Hills Mall. And people were following them, you know, like, Malik, Malik. And I was like, all right, I'm going to be a dance champ. And then he, I remember he turned to me and he was like, Psh, man, you can't, you can't be no dance champ, man. You know, leave that alone. And so I was like, okay. So that was my goal. I want to be a dance champ. So I worked, started a group, uh, got another group who would already won. And it's funny because my boy Oliver was like a rival of mine. Oliver used to dance for Madonna. He had the little blonde hair. He was the, the straight guy that danced with him and stuff. Right. He was in a group and we were like, like this. And then he was like, uh, you joined a group that's already a champ. So that, that don't count. So I started a group called the Godfathers. And we went on to win everything and beat Oliver's group. So then when I was done, I was like, what's next for me? And, and that's, what, that's what it is. It goes back to school. All right, I'm going to go to school. But then I felt like, nah, I need to do some more. My boy Gary was like, come to Europe, man. When were you ever going to get a chance to go to Europe? And that, what you just said earlier, I wish people from the hood, our folks, black, brown, whatever, would get a chance to just get out of the U.S., just for a minute. Man. You don't got to live nowhere. You owe it to yourself. Absolutely. Just for a little bit. Because being yeah. out there and seeing how people treated me and how mm -hmm. people saw Americans and black people and meeting other people, like you, your little world is not even a blip. Like you understand, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, you guys aren't even tripping about certain things. I mean, yeah, you got your problems, but it's not like it is out there. And I was like, wow. I'd be in theaters, you know, I was learning Shakespeare then. I was a teenager, you know, in, in theater group. And, and, and they love art, right? 
So rap groups used to come to Germany all the time. I'm, you know, I'm sure you probably, you know, they used to come out there, stadiums filled. I never did Germany. You never did? Oh, no. they love it. When I first came out, it wasn't a lot of Spanish-speaking people over there. That's true. I remember, I'm the first of its kind you were, you were, type of thing. You were, so you were. My thing, I had to, I, I, I won't say I had to, but my thing was ambassador shipping hip-hop in Costa Rica, you Colombia, did. You did. Santiago, Chile, Mexico, Puerto Rico, you know. That's big, too. No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> That's huge. Argentina and none <laughs> yeah. of this because it, it helped to expand hip-hop, I, I think. And I... I it's not a stat in the stat books or anything like that, and I won't get a plaque or no shit, but that's kind of what yeah, I Yeah, but, but again, though, for people like me to see us yeah. doing what you're doing, for us, is big. For someone else, it may not be big, but for us, yeah. when, when you came out, it was like, you know, yeah, man, you see, yeah, man, man hey, he's one of my people, you know, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, you got the brim. Yeah, I was saying, I got the brim. I was like, this oh, shit. that was our thing. You know, girls used to, you know, I'd go to school, you know, and girls would be like, oh, and I'd be like, ah, mentiroso. Oh, yeah. he said the oh, word. Shit. <laughs> so that was, yeah. that was a lot of pride, man, because. Thank you, man. Be, and I pre Mama. thank you. And I, and I, because again, other than baseball, yeah, we don't exist. And Real people talk. act like black Latinos don't exist. I'm like, you ever watch baseball? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm wearing this hat today, because the entire Chicago White Sox is damn near Cuban. Damn near. Yeah. Damn near. That's how far we come, man. It's a blessing. Guys, I'm going case by case. This is the case Havana Lounge case. podcast with my man Marco Martinez, who's in the house. One of the stars shining bright right now from the hit TV show, Snowfall. Can, before we go any further, can I get the bag, the goodie bag that, I, that we brought for him? Oh, yeah. I, I want to present you this on air, man. Um, well, can we talk about your wine? We're going to talk about that, and we're going to pop that sucker open. This Havana is a, a wine. Thank you, brother. That's for you oh, right there. Appreciate that. Thank y'all. I want to show the label just real quick. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, yeah, bills, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold saying. on. Let's, let's yes, get this. Uh, thank you, AV let's get Chevy. This where we at right now? What camera are we on? Right there. We're on you camera one. That's you. AV Chevy. Yes, indeed. And that's for you to take home oh, this and, is and dope. play with those goodies later. This is dope. Yeah, you, you're going to love it. Oh, that. my daughter's going to love this. Oh, you got golf balls in here? You got all kind of drinks? Yeah, we got we got you covered, man. If you oh, want to yeah. play Frisbee, you're going to play Frisbee. My, hey. If you want to play golf, there's a golf ball to get you started. What? Hey, mask up. Do there whatever. You go. Stay there safe. You go. There Absolutely. you go. I want to thank my sponsors, AV Chevy. Appreciate Cilantro you. Lime in downtown LA and Daily Ads for the love they've been showing the show. We are in our Appreciate second you. season now. Appreciate you. And it's been a, a blast and, a, and a, a, a learning experience for me. I mean, now, when I first started this thing, if you don't mind me you know. sharing a little something, I didn't know shit about a camera <laughs> other than I'm going to do a video and I'm going to stand in front of it. Yeah. Now I can set up a set, a breakdown, a yep. set, know what, you know what I mean? Lighting needs to be here. Yep. We need to shade this out. Anyway, it's been a learning experience, and I'm having a good time with it. And I get to meet people like yourself, bro, and hey, it's I, an honor. It's, it's, it's my an honor. honor. Thank you. And content is important. Uh, we were just talking about being Afro-Latino, and I think earlier I was telling you that, you know, I, I, um, I'm in the process of, of pitching a show called The Blatinos. So yeah, it's a, it's congratulations. A, thank you. It's a I know you got a little play in there for your man. Yeah, a little play, you know. <laughs> Um, I sleep hey, the motherfucking hey, studio. It, it takes place in the '80s. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I got I got a little storyline about Martika. I'm sure that there could be a storyline hey, about man. you. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely right, we'll talk. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But I just signed with a, with a really big agency. Congratulations, um, man! We, we uplift you, brother. Thank you. Well, that's why you're here. I wanted to uplift you, man. As soon as I found out you were Cuban, I'm like, yo, <laughs> perfect sense. Havana Lounge. This yeah. man's doing his thing. Yeah. I commend what you're doing, bro. I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, man. And you're uplifting the rest of us at the same time. Um, so I'm, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm trying. I'm trying to represent. Like I said, you know, you you and there's others that 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 represent, and you've been there for our culture. Appreciate that, and, and that means a lot. No, no, no. You're welcome. Nah, Don't let on, me hold drift on, off hold on. me. Hold on, hold man. on, hold nah, on, nah, hold on. No, we gotta, too, we gotta, we gotta say this the truth, about... though. <laughs> the truth is, look, you gotta pay homage to the people that came before you, right? So, I do. All so. The time. So every little bit, like there's a guy, Juano Hernandez, who people don't know. He was the first Afro-Latino Broadway and movie star in Hollywood. I had the opportunity. I got cast 
in a film to play him. Um, but I didn't like the direction of the script. And so unfortunately I left, but, but that's a story that, that I think I want to tell because in the, in the, in the, tw you know, twenties, late in thirties, yeah. back when we couldn't be on film and he was in Broadway, he was on Broadway and he was, you know, and, and he was in movies and, wow. and he was a Can you say the name again for the people? Juan Hernandez. Juan and that's, and that's uh, he's a Puerto Rican guy. And he opened doors for us, right? Whether we know sure. it or not. Yeah. And, and and every year, you know, around Black History Month, I go on my IG account and I go on and I I, I pay homage to I Afro, saw that Afro Latinos. I saw did it. Did you? Like, did it for you and your this. brother? This is brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> did it. Listen, Afro Phase On. A lot of people don't know Big Worm, Big yes, Firm is Phase On Love. Absolutely. Um, and and you know Gina Torres, who I'm trying to get on my show to play my mom, Gina. Calls. But um no, you know, it 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 I think that the brother who played Kunta Kente in Roots is Cuban. Lavar? No, not him. The one who played him let the grandson. He's oh the yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. See? I Toby don't even know this. Or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. The 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 younger one then the Yes, Dark Brother. The, yeah. Fro I forget the name. Yeah, I forget his name as well. See? I, I follow this um all things Cuban page on Facebook. Okay. And it, it gives you knickknack facts about Cubans and okay. you might have not known that such and such and is Cuban and or wow. the contribution of this one and that one. Wow. Yeah, you gotta check it out, man. It's dope. I, I definitely will. I definitely will. But no, you know. No, but no, I I appreciate the love and the accolades, man. Um it's a blessing today. I'm fifty five. I turned fifty five today. Cool. Hey, and happy to birthday, have man. you as my <laughs> guest, bro, is a gift. Uh, beyond belief, man. Um, I'm a fan of, of your work. Thank you. And what you're doing uh, on the show, Snowfall. Guys, if you guys haven't watched Snowfall, don't be like me. Don't be too self-absorbed. Go check out Snowfall. Check out the man's work. You're going to agree that the brother has a, a bright future ahead of him, man. And because of that, I want to make sure you're drinking my shit. <laughs> my wine, Havana Wines. This is my Moscato. I brought it for you, bro. Appreciate that. Um, and we can pop it open pop now. It. We Let's can pop you can it. pop it with a shorty. Nah, we gonna do pop what this you open. Do. We gonna pop this open. Here, get. You know how to do it. Yeah, I get. Now we'll, we'll get. Yeah, yeah. We'll get pop Solomon this, to pop, do it. Solomon, pop you wanna pop this open, yeah, man? We gonna, we, we can't have him Solomon hurting his hands. He got, he got yeah, a scene no, coming I gotta, up. I gotta work. He got a scene coming but up. You know, um, um, yeah, they there there's some talk about me, you know, coming back to Snowfall. I, I appreciate it. It's a great cast, great show. Let's let's rewind that a little yeah, bit. How yeah. how did you get involved though, bro? How how was the process? Did you audition? Yeah. Did you get the call back? And if you did, what you know what I mean? How how did that go? So um, you know, and I, you know this story, but uh John Singleton is 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 was uh one of my uh, fraternity brothers yes. and we we um I see him a lot at the gym and we talk a lot and 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 he was always like, you know, I gotta gotta get you on my show, I gotta get you on Snowfall, right? And I was like, Yeah, we write a black Cuban character in, right? Right. Yeah. Some guy from Miami or you know, or something like that. And he's like, Yeah, you know, let me think about that. Then then um Go ahead, bring it in, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. We just unfortunately, talking. bam. There you go, brother. There you go. Unfortunately, he uh he passed away not too long after that's right, that's right. our conversation yeah, right. right there. Yeah, I ain't gonna. But um, so he, yeah, he passes away yeah. during this. During that time, I met another brother who was the DP, Tommy, um, on the show. He 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 left, but he was like, "Yo, we need to get you on Snowfall." So I, you know, and I'm like, okay. And then um, it just so happened I booked um, I booked a guest star on said the Entertainer show, The Neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I booked uh, doing the Buena Vista Social Club musical. So yes. cheers. Buena Trying Vista. to fast track oh that God, to Broadway. Musician. So I booked, you know, um, Juan DeMarcos, who who actually put the group together and produced their music. So I was heading to New York, and then I got the call. Hey, Snowfall, you know, there's an audition, and I was telling you, I was like, well, you know, what's what's the role? Uh, it's a it's a veteran. He has PTSD. You're a vet. They really want you on here, and I'm like. You know, how many episodes? Well, right now, it's just one, but, you know, the possibility is that they bring this character back. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was contemplating because, you know, I don't, 
yeah, yeah, I want to, at this stage of my career, I want to, you know, I want to pick characters that mean something. And, and I, I read the sides. I, I knew what it was about. It was important to the arc of the story. It, it's where literally the uncle, I'm speaking for the uncle, he, he changes. Like, I want to get out of drug dealing. And I want to do something for my community. And it was through me talking that he has his revelation. So I was like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of deep. So and I, that was a deliver. You delivered the shit out of I that. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, How many takes? We did. <laughs> I mean, we did. You know no, I was well, going to ask. I, Solomon, you know I was going to ask. <laughs> are you a one take Jaker? I mean, what, you know, mm, 20 um, takes? No, no, no. We did about 304, and here's why. If you look at the scene, 304? No, three or. <laughs> okay. All right. Three they would have fired me on this. <laughs> no doubt. The, no the, doubt. And, 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 and um, shout, shout going out to Carl Seaton, who directed the episode. Shout out. Man, uh, I love the show, Carl. He, uh, there's a, the, the camera's on a dolly. So the timing is I have to say a certain speech and get to a certain point by the time the camera turns around, stops, and then Damn. starts pulling in on me to go behind me to, to the to big unk. Yeah. And so. You know, we, we, we did one take and it was like, okay, here's how the timing, we want to get it cool. We did a second one. I was feeling it. Carl had some notes and it was funny. I was thinking like, yo, like I felt I was there and he was like, yeah, but do this. Every director does that. Cause when they edit, they want to have, you know, different kind of takes. Right. So I was like, okay. So we did it a third time. And then Carl was like, yeah, that's good. But like he kept, he kept. He was mentally messing with me, right? Because by, I think, yeah, because it was the last time or the fourth time. And this time I was like, at this point, I was really like, you know, man, I, by the way, for this role, I went to the VA, you know, the, the, the homeless Absolutely. encampment yeah. uh, out there in Westwood. Off the 405. And I spent like a whole day out in tents, just chilling with them. Like those homeless vets. I was he like, was taking this shit serious, cause it's my people. I'm a veteran, so I was like, you know, if I, I'm not just gonna pretend. Jack and, nah, and I wanted to them. talk to some of them. Like, sure. Tell me about your story. Tell me about when you, you know, you served in Afghanistan. Tell me about, you know, old guys. They're still Vietnam vets living in the streets, by the way, which is a shame. Real talk. And so I was like, that moment, I kind of stopped and thought about them, and I was like, okay, you know what? And I think that's the take that. That we ended that up using, captured. yeah. Uh, that we end up capturing. So sometimes, you know, it it you can be prepared and do something. But I think that's the take where I kind of grounded myself, and I was like, look, you know, these guys, they they went and fought a war in a country that doesn't even they couldn't really even you know have they just got voting rights a few years before, yeah, right, and then they come back, and then the country goes baby killers we don't you know mm -hmm. you don't have a house so what you, you know you don't mm -hmm. you don't have medical care so what and so i was like I, you know i'm gonna tell we the story so do much better than we do in america you know what yeah I mean? certain, certain things we're not number one in taking care of our vets that's for sure unfortunately um not uh but but you know it became bigger than me man so i, I felt Absolutely. like I, I was carl gave me the space to get grounded and and tell this story from Gregory, that's the character's point of view, and I was just like, I was just hope I didn't even, I was just hoping that I could represent for them, for the people that I had seen, that sure. I would spoken to out there. Absolutely. Um. So yeah. So that's you that's nailed it, bro. Hey man, I appreciate. I that. mean, Thank I don't you. know their perspective like that, but when I saw it, I was like, yo, that was that shit was deep. Like, I, I appreciate. I'm telling it. my girl, I'm like, yo, that I don't know who that nigga is, but he's <laughs> No, 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 I was. At the time, I didn't know you like that. I was like, yo, that nigga delivered some shit right there. You know what I, I mean? I and, appreciate that. And it really captured the essence of that moment on, on Snowfall. Um, now, for you moving forward, professionally, what do you got your sights on? I know you, uh, you told me off screen you're developing some things. Yeah, so so I had a, a you know, kind of like a Cuban Miami Vice show um, that was at uh, Universal Television in production for two years. It didn't unfortunately go through because we couldn't shoot in Havana, but uh, they gave me my rights back to it. So okay. I'm trying to redevelop it right now. Um, like I said, I just signed on with uh, the cartel. They're a they're an international literacy management company and agency, 
and they're pitching my script. Shout out to the cartel. It's called The Blatinos. So uh, we got it out to Macro. We got it out to a few different companies. And, um, you know, it's, it's a comedy, like I said, loosely, ba loosely based on my family moving from a black Latino family moving from New York to L.A. back when nobody knew what black Latino was. Yes, so uh, you, yes. can, you can imagine the hijinks, but um, we're pitching that. Um, you know, and, and we're waiting right now to hear the rest of the cast, to hear what's going to happen with the Buena Vista Social Club musical. I was cast, like I said, in that. Yeah. We, uh, we perform uh, a few readings for investors and some theater owners in, in, in yeah. New York a little while back, and, and they've been trying to fast track that. So, you know, it, it's promising right now. I got a little Good. daughter. I got an eight-year-old, by the way. She's, uh, she's up for uh, some, some big projects she sings she plays piano man Get she's down. you know I'm, I'm managing her uh now are you married to a cuban lady no you got i you, am what not you get, what you get? sorry kawana <laughs> what'd you sorry. get hey man no, i didn't my, either i mean my choices were limited my, here. my wife uh my wife is actually korean american man korean uh, korean get American. Down. yeah but she she is uh it was funny because uh i, I was married before a lot of people don't know uh, my, my ex um, was uh, Dominican and Puerto Rican. We still get along, but yeah. But during you know, oh, she had to be a hot blooded one, <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? Come on, hey, nigga. As a, as a, as a, <laughs> as a, you know, you know, you know. I I met I know Zoe. And she's half Puerto Rican, half Dominican, and she's is like, that right? And she told me, oh yeah, yeah, you you. Wait, man. what Zoe you talking Zoe about? Zoe Saldana. Oh, she's half Puerto Rican, half Dominican. So, you know, yeah, that's I the don't know, blend right but there. that's, that's the ill blend. But no, I, I, uh, you know, Deb is my, my best friend and you talk about a Good. supporter, man. Like, um, you know, this, this whole career and you know this, like when you're, when you're an artist or when you're a business owner or when you're doing something and you're on your own and you're trying to build a career yeah. to have someone there that's always just, I got you. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Just do that. That's so valuable. And that's, that's it. Like, yeah. and, and. You know, when I'm having like doubts, like, hey, I'm not sure. She's like, well, you crazy. Like, hey, come on, get up. Let's do this. Hey, hey, did you did you write that that, you know, the the, the scene you were supposed to finish writing that scene? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Get up and write that scene. That's right. You know what I mean? And and the show was actually when I finished working on the script, I didn't know what to call it. So I was like the other Latinos. Right. And she was like, just call it the Latinos. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Right. So she's been, she's been. She completes there. you in a way. She completes me. No she's, she's a clinical psychologist, which is cool. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, she, she doesn't, I like to use the word. It's not a word, but I like to say psychologize me. She, she doesn't do that, but she does. Maybe give me, she is doing it. Give me perspective. <laughs> you just maybe, <laughs> maybe. You know I how they know. do it. They sneaky. Hey man, I, you know, she, she, she keeps me grounded. And I tell you what, uh, one of the things she keeps me from getting in my own way, which is important. Mm. I'm not gonna say anything about anybody, but yeah. if I was ever upset about something somebody said to her, uh, she would probably keep me from getting up and, and smacking them. I ain't gonna say nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, there you have it, people. <laughs> you gotta hear first, Havana Lounge podcast. Yeah, hey, hey, I love everybody, man. Hey, man, um, we're coming toward the end, unfortunately. Yes, you know, uh, it's been a pleasure having you, bro. Uh, I uplift you, man. That's why we want to have you on here. Appreciate that. I want to thank you for doing this. But before you go, um, tell the peeps how you can how they can find you uh, and whatnot. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty active um, on Instagram. So Marco Martinez, actor. I've got a website. Um, I actually coach uh, actors. I, I believe it or not, I coach Forrest Whitaker. In well, the movie, you uh, have to coach me. Yeah, Catch 44. Get... He played a Cuban character. He's having trouble with yeah. it. So I coached him. MM, MM Actor Studio. No, just actorstudio.com. I coach a lot yeah. of actors that are on shows now or, you know, that are that are auditioning. Get down. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, active on social media or my website. You can always reach me. Out. Which is? MMActorStudio.com. MMActorStudio. There you go. Dot com. You could reach me there, or you could reach me on, on Instagram, uh, Marco Martinez Actor. Absolutely, man. Right. Let's continue to uplift this brother, man. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure having him. Today is my birthday. Happy and birthday, man. this is man. one of my gifts Cheers. right here. I get to interview Cheers my Cheers to you, man. Happy birthday to Get down. You. Stop Thanks, that messing around. Guys, you've been watching Havana Lounge podcast. I have been Mellow Man Ace. That has been Marco Martinez. And um, like I always say around this time, oh, wait, before I do, I want to thank my peoples over at Jeff Mo, J-E-F-M-O, who recently gifted me, and I should have brought it in before I even talked about it, but if, you, if you've seen my Instagram page, you've seen them bless me with my own CBD cigars, yeah, and yeah, yeah, um, I'll that. be taking them out on the golf course tomorrow. Shout out to Ozzy and everybody at Jeff Mo. I really do appreciate you. On that note, don't forget that you're, uh, in the great words of my man, one of my mentors, Curtis Mayfield, don't forget that your dream is your only scheme, so keep on pushing and move on up. I'm Mellow Man Ace. Cheers. It's a Van Lounge podcast, and we are like that. Right. Peace. Cheers.